Hi, uh, I'm Dina Kitabi. I'm a professor at MIT and also um, a co-founder of a startup called Emerald Innovations. So at a very high level, you can think of it as a smarter Wi-Fi box. So it's a box that looks like your Wi-Fi router. It sits in the background of the home and it analyzes the wireless signals in the environment. And from that analysis, and which is done using artificial intelligence, it's, uh, it's extract breathing, heart, heartbeat, uh, mobility, sleep, sleep stages. And from all those physiological signals, it can create kind of like the status of the health of the individual in the, in the environment. And all without like putting sensors on people's bodies or asking them to do anything. I think one of the most important thing in, in responding to coronavirus is, uh, of course, the contagious uh, nature of the disease. So um, for the caregiver and people who are trying to help and the health professionals, the interaction with the patient is high risk. And if they can actually monitor and get all of these physiological signals from the patient without having to get into prox proximity of the patient or physical contact of the patient, they can be in fact, outside the room, in, in our case, uh, then actually it reduces the risk dramatically both for the caregiver uh, and also that the caregiver himself or herself might spread the disease to other people. One of the most vulnerable uh, population, as you probably know, is the population in nursing homes and assisted living communities, because those people are older and they have comorbidities, and at the same time they get this disease. Uh, the, the retirement home typically has so many people, so it's very dense, and the people who, who take care, the caregiver to those people are not are not as trained as people in the hospital, for example. So one of the things that we did it was uh, one of the retirement homes here in the Boston area uh, is uh, we deployed the device with the coronavirus uh, patients, people who are COVID uh, positive, and we, we extracted the respiration signal, the mobility uh, of the patient, the, the, the sleep, and we were able to provide this information to the staff and also to the, to the primary doctor who's taking care of that patient. So the primary doctor was able to access the information from his home and the staff at the facility does not need as much to get inside the room of the patient to be able to get her vital signs. So we have this device that can monitor using the wireless signal and can monitor even patients through walls. And uh, so, so we are very, very careful that privacy is a priority for us. The data is owned by the patient and the patient is the one who can decide how the data can be used, for example, if they, can, if they want to provide it to their primary care provider. Uh, so, so that I think is very important. Also, we, we do encrypt the data and separate it. It's completely de-identified. The data itself and the identifier are, are stored completely separately. Uh, now, the bigger the bigger uh, picture about surveillance and um, is this going to increase surveillance, I think it's really our choice as communities and societies. Uh, I think it shouldn't. Uh, it should be always based on consent and based on the what the person themselves desire. And this is their information. They can use it as they'd like to use it to in our case, is to improve their own health. Um, I think it's the responsibility of all of us as societies and communities to ensure that we can help but, and we can use information, but we don't use it against people.